What's up, everybody? Hope everybody's good. Uh, we are back with the power bomb covering both the NXT Takeover from Houston and the Survivor Series from Houston. And so this should be a pretty good, uh, uh, pretty good power bomb here. Uh, first thing I want to say is, um, so we're gonna start with uh, the Takeover first. Uh, just seeing the uh, War Games set up uh, for TakeOver took me back to being 9, 10 years old, and yes, I am completely, 100% okay with that. Uh, first match on TakeOver card was Cassie Sono uh, versus Lars Sullivan. Um, now, this is the one match on this card that kind of has the has the old one of these things just doesn't belong here one of these things just isn't the same type of feel to it but I will give my thoughts on it for what it was it was a, it was a good um, hard hitting match it was what it needed to be um, Sullivan went over relatively easily and that's really all I can say about that because this is a match that, for whatever reason, they put on this card, but it didn't feel like it needed to be there. Um, I would have personally put um, in place of this one on the card um, the two matches that were taped for um, the NXT show that just dropped on Wednesday, um, those being. Uh, Saudi Deville versus Ruby Riot, and Pete Dunne versus Johnny Gargano for the UK Championship. You put those two matches in place of that one, and it makes up for the um, for the void there. So, but that's just my thoughts on that. Uh, next on the card, we had um, Alistair Black versus Velveteen Dream. Um, this was just awesome. Um, you know, I especially I loved the chain wrestling at the start, and the fact that the dream channeled uh, Red Machine Rick Rude with his gear. Uh, he had himself painted on one leg, the Alistair painted on the other, and it was all the way around. So I enjoyed the uh, little homage to Rick Rude there. Um, the chain wrestling, like I said, was awesome. I think Dream may have surprised some people by the fact that he was able to hold his own chain wrestling with, um, with Alistair. Um, there was a spot in the match where, um, they basically became mirror images of each other, and... It was awesome to see them both doing um, the um, black um, um, the pose where he sits and just um, the meditation pose. That's what I was looking for. Um, and then and then. Um, Black switch to uh, the um, the dreams uh, little slithery get inside your head pose and kind of creep them out. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, uh, this match was just I can't say enough good things about this match. I was impressed by both guys. I said way back in the last incursion of Tough Enough or incarnation of Tough Enough that if only one guy was to hit from Tough Enough that Patrick Clark would be it and Patrick Clark is now the Velveteen Dream and so I'm glad to be right on that. Uh, Black wins. Uh, with the black mask kick, um, and then 
at the end, he gets the microphone, sits in his little Indian style meditation pose, and actually says the dream's name. So, yeah, dream lost, but dream won too. And I really wouldn't mind actually seeing, um, you know, more from these two, because this was just phenomenal. Uh, next, you had the four-way for the vacant NXT women's title. You had Kyrie Sane, uh, Peyton Royce, uh, Ember Moon, and Nikki Cross. Um, I had high expectations for this, um, and for the most part, those expectations were exceeded. Um, maybe it's because I've seen her work before WWE. That I'm just so un. Ugh, I just don't know what the hell has happened to Peyton Royce. Everything she did in the match looked damn near legit dangerous, and she really didn't deserve that spot. As hard as that is for me to say, because I've seen her work prior to WWE, and it's just off the charts. Um, it's another thing it just kind of goes to show you, you know, maybe having to work in WWE style just doesn't fit some people. Um, and people have asked me actually if you would have taken her out of the match, who would you give the fourth spot to? Easy, I give the fourth spot to Sonya Deville because, um, you know. I feel like she would have just flowed the match better. Um, and I don't think we would have had any of the problems with um, shit being dangerous or people, you know, possibly being hurt. Um, so there's that on that. Um, solid work from three of the four. Again, I don't think, and as much as this pains me to say this, because I love her work outside of WWE. I just don't think Peyton Royce is um, cut out for the ability to work a WWE style. Um, Ember Moon takes a strap. Uh, this was the first sort of stunner of the night to me. Um, I thought that Kairi Sane would have took it, but I guess there is, like I was telling uh, Lucy yesterday about the possibility of um, women's tag titles, I guess it is good to have um, Ember Moon win because the money of having Kairi Sane chasing her for that belt and then finally getting it is probably better in the long run than going ahead and um, giving it to kind of saying now and have her go on a long undefeated streak. <sighs> um, but Kairi Sane's time, it's coming. Next, we had Andrade Cien Almas um, versus uh, Drew McIntyre for the NXT title. Uh, this was another stunner to me. Um, Andrade won the belt, but I really don't think he was supposed to win. Um, I think Drew, about halfway through the match, got legitimately hurt, and they had to change the match on the fly. Um, so, um, and the reason I say that is because once the referee made the three count, you never, you usually see referee makes a three count, grabs the belt, gives it to his guy, gives it to new champ, raises his hand, and that's it. In this case, referee made the three count, grabbed the belt, didn't even give it to Almas, just held on to it, and was down for the longest time, like squatted on his, you know, like in a catcher's position, uh, tending to Drew, so, you know, I've never in my life seen a referee literally shit on a title change, um, you know, and it's not his fault, 
Drew was legitimately hurt, but that is the um, um, you know, but that sometimes happens, and I've just never seen it be so obvious before. Um, if that makes sense. Hopefully, um, Andrade is a transitional champion, and within a couple weeks to maybe a month, um, we'll see him drop the title to Adam Cole, um, because I think that was the original plan, um, for Drew McIntyre was to drop the title to Adam Cole later on down the line, and Fish just kind of... Uh, fuck that all up because he got legit injured. So, um, let's see. It was a good match before the injury. Um, I thought um, Andrade stepped up the way, you know. But I just don't think he was either ready for the spot or needed to be in that spot. But due to the injury, I understand the title change. But like I said, I do not think um, it was originally planned that way. I think because of the injury, um, Hunter had to make a call and they had to do a quick title switch. Um, so let's hope uh, Drew gets everything figured out, recovers, and gets back quickly. Uh, last but not least on the NXT TakeOver show was the War Games. Um, and originally going into this, I was hyped as hell, but I was still a little bit, um, nervous because I remember war games the way it was from the 80s and the 90s, and I wasn't sure whatever modern twists the WWE would have put on it would work, but they actually did, and I'm not going to give too much away about those twists, because I want people to actually go to WWE or sit down and watch this two and a half hour show. Um, it's worth the two and a half hours, um, definitely, and you need to watch it. So, I'm not going to go too much into the details of the ins and outs of what the different twists they put on it were, but it's worth checking out. Um, I thought it was interesting, and I was, I popped big for this when, uh, Roderick Strong came out, uh, with the Authors of Pain as his partners. Actually, in Authors of Pain, uh, they were wearing, all three of them were wearing the same gear. Um, And if I hadn't seen this match, I wouldn't have believed it. I don't think, given the time that we're in and the circumstances behind it, I do not think any other nine guys could have pulled this off um, quite the way that uh, Undisputed Era, um, Roddy and AOP, and Sandy did. Um... I think they made Green proud. Um, I don't think they bastardized it or made it seem irrelevant. Um, and really, all my fears coming into this uh, turned out to be unfounded. Um, Undisputed Era picks up the W, and I think. If they want to continue the um, Undisputed Era um, Roddy feud, they may want to keep him with the Authors of Pain. That way it's an even matchup, and he's got back up. So everybody's got back up here in this feud. <sighs> Final thoughts on this show. What a show. Not really much more than that that I can say. Um, the only match that didn't fit and didn't really feel 
like it had the same intensity as all the others. Like I said, was the uh, Laura Sullivan Cassius Ono. I would have replaced that match with both matches that were were recorded for um, NXT that dropped Wednesday. Uh, like I said, uh, that would have been UK title match between Pete Dunne and Johnny Gargano, and the match between Sonya Deville and Ruby Riot. Um, just because I think those two matches could have filled that one spot and would have fit better on this particular card. Um, everybody did an awesome job. They all stepped up. They worked as hard as they could. That includes Ono and Sullivan, even though I don't think the match should have been on this card. Um, match of the night goes to the War Games. Surprise, surprise. Um, honorable mention, though, honestly could have went to and is going to go to um, Alistair Black in the Dream because that rate that match is a match of the year candidate. I don't care what anybody says. <sighs> okay. This brings us to the actual Survivor Series pay per view. Um, now, this show had three matches on a two hour kickoff show. Um, first, we had Elias and Matt Hardy. Just kind of kind of go through these because these weren't really anything um, to write home about and nothing really stood out to me in these. Um, Elias beats Matt Hardy. Kid is okay in the ring, um, but Booker put him over doesn't do him any favors because Booker's just an old curmudgeon fart that needs to be gone. Um, next we had Enzo and Kalisto. Enzo retains. Ugh, whatever. Ugh, God damn it. I'm so over Enzo. Uh, he just needs to go the fuck away. Um, and we had Breezango versus Amos and Dylan. And I've said this to, uh, to Lizzie um, when I was watching the show. These four guys deserve much better than this. Um, this was by far the best of the three matches on the pre-show. Um, but that's not really saying much. Um, and I'm not surprised it was the best of the three on the pre-show. Given the four guys involved, uh, KO and Sammy pick up the W. <sighs> Alright, main card time. Uh, we started with The Shield and The New Day in a six man tag. Uh, tremendous effort by all six guys. It's got this, this got the show off to a hot, hot start. And. This match alone is worth going out of your way uh, to go and see. Um, Shield takes the W on this, but honestly, these six guys, I could watch them go in a best of seven series of matches and probably see something different every time. Um, next, we had the Raw Women versus the SmackDown Women. Um... Becky was the first, was the first out was the first out, which was a bit of a stunner to me. Which not a bit of it was a stunner uh, to me. Um, the Tamina Nia uh, showdown mid match was cool, with just the two of them standing in the uh, standing in the middle middle of the ring. Um, I thought the roof was going to come off the place. Um, Oscar was beyond dominant. Uh, Raw wins, and I actually loved what this match turned into. So, next you had uh, Miz versus Baron Corbin. Um, this was a good match. Uh, uh, Miz got the best out of Corbin that I've seen since he debuted on the main roster. Um, but Miz has that ability now to 
work with anybody and pull good matches out of anybody and everybody he works with. Um, Corbin gets SmackDown's first W on this. Um, so, you know, right person won here, I think. Next, we had the Usos versus the Bar. Um, this was excellent work from all four. Um, I can't say enough good things about all four of these guys. Um, I'd like to see more matches between them, but I don't know that that's going to happen. Um, Usos took the W, tying the score at 2-2. Two -two. Um, four wins, Raw and SmackDown. Uh, next we had Charlotte versus Alexa. Uh, this to me was a great match. It had great storytelling by both. Um, I'd love to see more between these two. I feel like that's a broken record at this point, but it's true. Um, Charlotte wins. SmackDown goes up three matches to two. Next we had AJ versus Brock. Um, Incredible work here. Um, AJ carried this big bastard to the best match I've seen him have since he came back uh, a couple years ago. Um, Brock wins, but AJ, AJ definitely, definitely, definitely earned his money. Um, last match of the night was the SmackDown Raw, SmackDown Men versus the Raw Men. Raw wins. Braun dominates, no said, but um, Triple H pedigreed angle, letting Finn get the win, and then he, Triple H pedigreed Shane, and got the win for his team, um, and then afterwards he got power slammed twice by Braun and Braun was just dominant raw wins pretty good show um everybody stepped up um and showed out uh match of the night for this one definitely goes to the shield in your day uh, that's the thoughts and notes and takeaways from TakeOver and Survivor Series. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for fostering. That's all I can do this. So I appreciate y'all very much. I love y'all. I'll be back uh, soon with a power bomb for Clash of the Champions. Um, that is, I believe, on December 7th, 16th or 17th. Um, so stay tuned. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, I love y'all. See you soon. Peace.